The Dalmatian Connection, by Norma King, written in 2010. Produced by Lorraine Kelly in March 2019. Copyright belongs to Lorraine Kelly. Please do not publish or copy without permission. This podcast is a story about two couples, Jenny and Matt Kazia, and Jean and Mark Zabella. They lived in Western Australia in the early 1900s. Included is what was happening around them, two international exhibitions and excerpts of two intriguing diaries. They were a part of a unique community in Western Australia. Chapter 1 The Kazias Jenny Kazia and her husband Matt had met and were married in Allendale, Victoria. Matt worked there as a metallurgist on a mine. Matt migrated to Australia in the late 1800s. He had come to free mental from Zlorin, which is an island off the coast of Dalmatia. Dalmatia is a narrow belt of the east shore of the Adriatic Sea. It is one of the four historical regions of Croatia. Jenny was from Londonderry in Ireland. Matt could speak many languages. He could speak Croatian, English, German, Italian and French well, but he was not so good at reading English. Jenny spoke only English. The couple arrived in Boulder, Western Australia, from Victoria in 1897. Boulder is situated in the eastern goldfields and is about 5 kilometers from Kalgoorlie. The two towns were amalgamated in 1988 and became the city of Kalgoorlie Boulder. Jenny Kazia was an avid reader and had the daily newspaper, The Kalgoorlie Miner, and its weekly offshoot, The Western Argus, delivered to her home. After reading the papers, Jenny discussed the news of the day with her husband when he came home from work. One day in January 1899, Jenny read in the Calgary Minor that a big international exhibition would be held in Paris in March 1900. This set her thinking. For some time, she and Matt had been talking about making an overseas trip to see his family in Zlarin and Terz in Ireland. Jenny suggested they leave Australia early in 1900 and while away visit the Paris exhibition. They had already visited the Cool Guardi International Exhibition. When Matt and Jenny Kazia were living in Boulder, Matt worked for, or was involved with the business of Ludwig Hans watchmaker, jeweler and goldsmith. This was situated in Peace Street and Matt and Jenny lived in the residence attached to the shop. There was also a family connection between the Hans and Kazias, because in 1898, after Ludwig Hahn was divorced from his first wife, he married Jenny's sister, Hannah Stevenson. Hahn's business was a lucrative one, most likely because of his dealings as a gold buyer. In October 1898, Han was charged with buying 27 ounces of gold slimes from a man called Bowman. Bowman was subsequently charged with stealing the slimes from the Brown Hill gold mine and treating it to extract the gold. Before this time, there was no law that required gold buyers to keep records. However, in February of the following year, there was a regulation that gold buyers had to buy a yearly license and keep records of every gold transaction. This apparently did not deter Han from buying stolen and gold, and although he was fined two or three more times for that offense, it appears he was never sent to prison. Seeing that Matt was later able to take six months off work to travel overseas, one wonders if he was involved in any of these shady transactions. However, it does not seem so, as his name was never mentioned in any of the court cases that were held against Han. Matt could have saved his money, or received it through gambling at cards, as he was a successful gambler. In the early years, there was a very tolerant attitude in the gold fields towards gold stealing. The workers thought that they, as well as shareholders, should profit from gold in the mines that were owned by a company. The police in the gold fields of Western Australia had a lot of trouble bringing in a conviction for gold stealing. An official report by them to Parliament in 1899 stated that, Both the staff and myself have done our best to cope with it, but our efforts present themselves to me in the light of a child's endeavors to bail out a river with a spoon. End of chapter 1